feuds. This is now a community that may be coping with a double-edged tragedy, the loss of life and possibly the loss of jobs. And that was our Steve Crump reporting 25 years ago on what turned out to be North Carolina's most devastating worst place workplace accidents ever. Yeah, more than two dozen people died on the job 80 miles east of Charlotte in the town of Hamlet when a mechanical fire broke out at the Imperial Foods chicken processing plant. All new this morning, our Steve Crump revisits a community still impacted by pain and loss 25 years later. With all these trees, I still see the building here. Bobby Quick revisits the place where 25 people died on the job 25 years ago this month. Right. Haunting grief filled the air at the old Imperial Foods plant and Quick's bravery allowed people to live. He kicked his way through a deliberately locked door, freeing him and providing a path for other workers to escape. So I backed up to the brick wall and I just ran as hard as I could and went for a flying Superman kick and, and it came open. And all the women that was in there with me come out. As soon as I saw the sunlight from the door being pushed open, I passed out. Annette Zimmerman, who also worked at the chicken processing plant, survived the blast and the blaze. By the time the paramedics were out here, uh, I had passed out again and they were passing out a little oxygen mask. And I hear screams and screams and screams. I'm talking at the top of their lungs. Please help us, please help us. Oh God, please help us. We don't want to die, please help us. Hamlet is known for its ties to the railroad industry. This Richmond County community of 6800 is the birthplace of jazz legend John Coltrane. And a standing tribute honors the fallen workers near the center of town. In addition to the 25 that were killed on that day, 54 people were injured. And across this community, more than 40 individuals lost a parent. Healing is a process that we go through every day. The name of Amy Perry's brother, Michael Albright, tops the list of employees who didn't make it out alive. As a community, we have pulled together. Um, there has been a lot of uplifting moments. A key moment came during the 10th anniversary and was led by Pastor Tommy Legrand, who was a driving force in getting the building demolished. It was our responsibility to be involved, to assist the people, to bring some healing, to bring some progress. <laughs> the old plant is now a memorial site. Like so many others, Bobby Quick processes the memories, still feels the pain in his body, and ponders why the business's owner, Emmett Rowe, only served four years of a 19-year sentence connected to the deaths of 25 people. Prosecutors contend it was Roe who ordered the doors locked to stop the theft of fried chicken at his plant. I think about it every day I wake up. Mm. Wow. Steve Crump obviously reporting and here on set with us. Uh, uh, just an, an incredible piece you did here, but there's more to this story, right? Yeah, Yeah, we get into that uh, tonight at 6 and again 11 o'clock, but one of the interesting things when we saw Bobby Quick there, that was the first time he had been back at that plant in 25 years since that accident actually happened. And in doing some research, you talk about Michael Albright, who we mentioned in that piece. We were going through some articles in the Charlotte Observer. Uh -huh. Come to find out he had only been on that job three weeks. Oh my goodness wow. gracious. And you know Hamlet, a lot of people have driven through Hamlet because it's on the way to the, the beach. beach. Yep. And uh, my family is from Rockingham, which is right, right over. Yeah. And, it, and, it, and it has tremendous impact, not just on Hamlet, but that whole surrounding area there because that chicken plant was such a uh, an economic driver in it, that it, area it was, there. It was the town's biggest employer. They employed roughly 90 people. Some 79 of those folks were impacted. The jobs eventually have come back to Richmond County, but still this time of the year is a very rough place for them to be. Mm. So part two airs tonight. Tonight at 6. 6 p.m. So make Looking sure you tune in and good, watch that. Good story. We should yeah. never forget this, Steve. Thanks. Thanks, Steve. Hey, this is the quarter century anniversary of a tragedy that shook a small town in North Carolina. 25 people killed, more than 50 hurt, at Hamlet's Imperial Foods Chicken Processing Plant. When a fire broke out, the exit doors of the plant were locked. WBTV Steve Crump was on the scene of the fire 25 years ago and found years later 
This case left a mark on the first responders. His story, all new at 6. For firefighters in Hamlet, North Carolina, frantic dispatches on the morning of September 3rd, 1991 were anything but typical. I called for every fire department and every rescue squad in the county. The May Day call still rings in Chief Calvin White's psyche. He was a captain at the time and his truck was the first to arrive at the burning Imperial Foods plant. I had to move um, those souls, those precious individuals twice that day. I know who you are, how you been doing? All right. Two and a half decades later, the recurring aftermath is still hard to shake for those who survived the accidental fire at the place of processed fried chicken. The plant site is now a community park and public memorial. I've had three um, neck surgeries. Recovery for Annette Zimmerman goes beyond physical injuries. The trauma she faced in what's been called a death trap has sent her to a mental health facility more than once. I spent plenty of time there, unfortunately, but it's because nightmares, uh, especially around this time of year. You've had nightmares. I still do. Bobby Quick's strong feet power through one of the many locked doors. His actions allowed trapped co-workers to go free. I missed my spine open in several places. Many challenges came for first responders on that day. Among the obstacles they had to face, separating professionalism from their personal feelings. It was tough. I mean, it was, it was, you know, just just one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life. Scott Waters is the Hamlet Police Chief. 25 years ago, he responded to the scene as a member of a local rescue squad. A lady got me and um, grabbed my hand, and she carried it where my mom was at and um, she was laid out on the street. There's other people around her. His mother, Martha Waters, worked at the plant and still battles health-related issues connected to the 1991 fire. My mom, I still have her. 25 died that day, 54 were injured, and years later, those called to serve trying to make sense of the jarring flashbacks. You know, it's, it's those types of memories that you take with you to your grave. While flames and smoke inhalation were among the contributing factors, Chief Calvin White wrestles with the policies and disregard for life carried out by the owners and operators of Imperial Foods. The doors being locked is the very reason that people died in that fire. Yeah. Well, wow. yeah, 25 mm -hmm. years later, you mm -hmm. talk to the, some of those first responders, you can tell it still impacts their lives. Certainly, and the doors were locked. That's the thing that gets everybody about that, Steve. And we'll find out more about that tonight at 11. Our investigative reporter, Nick Eisner, will be following the story, and we will have it for you then. Great, Steve Kramp. Thanks so much. It was right. a great story, Steve.